Hi everybody, Mr. Iker here. This video is right after Thanksgiving break, so happy Thanksgiving. Looking forward to winter break coming up in a couple weeks. So in this video, we'll be talking about inverses. Um, all the different functions we talk about in Math 3, we'll talk about inverses of those functions. And you've talked about inverse operations before, like multiplication and division are inverse operations. Addition and subtraction are inverse operations. So uh, that's what we'll be talking about in this lesson. So if you have these notes, 5.2 notes, I'd encourage you to print those out, take some notes. Uh, otherwise, you can just take some notes on paper. And um, yeah, so let's get started. Two relations are inverse relations if and only if whenever one relation contains the element x comma y, the other relation contains the element y comma x. So in other words, to figure out inverses, we swap the x and y coordinate of each ordered pair. So for example, if we have one relation, a relation is a set of ordered pairs. Here's our three ordered pairs. If we swap those, then this one comma two is gonna be two comma one, and then three four is gonna be four three, and then five six is gonna be six five. So we would say S and Q are inverses because every element in Q, x comma y, is kind of the opposite, or the inverse we call it, of all the elements in S. So you have some questions like find the inverse of each relation. So on number one, we could state all we have to do is switch these ordered pairs, and that will give us the inverse of the relation. Um, number two is a try this, so you can try that on your own. Uh, and then number three, we can do the same graphically. So this first point on the far left here is negative four comma one. So we go one negative four. So just switch the X and the Y of that ordered pair. Um, the next one up here is negative one four. So we'll go four negative one. And then the last one right here is zero two, so two zero. So the blue dots that you see, the blue dots are the inverse of the black dots. And something that we'll see a little bit later is inverses are reflections over the y equals x line. So this line that I've graphed is y equals x. It's a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. But you can see that each of these points are a reflection over that line. So visually or graphically, you'll be asked later to identify which functions are inverses. So what you can look at is the y equals x line. Let's look at some notation with inverses and how to write an inverse based on an equation. Property of inverse functions, suppose f, a function f, and the inverse of f. Now it looks like it's a, I'll zoom in even more, it looks like it's an exponent, and it's not really an exponent. This is just notation for an inverse. So these are inverse functions. f and the inverse of f are inverse functions. Um, that means if you evaluate f of a and get b, then if they're inverses, you should be able to do the inverse of b and get back to a. So if you plug a in, your output is b. The inverse is the opposite of that. That means if you plug b in, you get a. That's the idea of swapping, however you spell swap, swapping the x and the y. So steps to finding inverse functions. We'll replace the notation, like the f of x notation, with y in the original equation. That makes it a little easier for us. We'll interchange or swap x and y. This is the swap step. Uh, and then once we interchange x and y, we solve for y, so we isolate, solve for y, and then we'll replace y back to the correct and proper inverse notation, which is that negative one looking exponent. Um, so really the, the main two steps are the step two and three. Steps one and four is um, just helping us set up the problem so it's a little easier to look at. So let's look at a couple examples on the bottom of this page. Find the inverse of each function. 
graph each function and its inverse. Is the inverse also a function? Why do you think that's the case? Also, draw the line y equals x. So we have a lot of steps here. But let's just focus on these steps. So for question number four, we're going to, number one, replace f of x with y. So that just gets rid of that notation. y and f of x are uh, identical, just different symbols for the same thing. So that was step number one. Step number two, we're going to swap or interchange x and y. So wherever there's an x, I'm going to put a y. Wherever there's a y, I'm going to put an x. So that we get that. Uh, and then for step number three, we solve for y. So we're going to add 5 to both sides to solve for y. So we get x plus 5 equals y. And then step number four, we're going to um, replace y with the proper notation. And I'm going to put the y out in front. So we have the inverse of f of x equals x plus 5. Now that was a lot of work, but if you think about it, I hope it makes sense. If you have this function, x minus 5, the inverse of that function would be x plus 5. So if we were to graph the first function, I'll do that in, um, I guess I'll do that in blue, and I'll do this bottom one in black. So if we graph the first function, we would have a negative 5 and a slope of 1. So here's the line x minus 5, so that's our f function. In black, we'll do the uh, other function. We'll go to 5, positive 5, and we have a slope of 1. And this is our inverse function. So that's f with a little negative 1, superscript. And we were asked about the line y equals x. I'll do that in red. So that's this line. So notice that the blue line, I'll just do a dashed line here. Notice that the blue line and the red line are inverses, or sorry, the, the blue line and the black line are inverses, and they're reflections over this line. So any point here, for instance, if you, we reflect this point over this red line, uh, we get uh, that point right there. So 0, 5 corresponds to 5, 0, swapping the x and the y. And that would be true for all the points all the way down. So like this point, if we reflect this point over this line, we would get this point. So negative 5, 0 reflects to 0, comma negative 5. Okay, let's look at number 5. Again, those four steps, we're going to replace y for the f of x. We're going to interchange or swap the x and the y. And then we're going to solve for y. So solving for y, I'm going to have to subtract 3 from both sides. That would be x minus 3 equals 3y. And then we divide both sides by 3. So it looks like we'd have y equals x minus 3 over 3. Uh, and then the last step, we get rid of the y, and we go back to the proper notation. So we'd have the inverse of f of x equals x minus 3 over 3. Uh, which is also equivalent to one-third x minus one. And then we're asked to graph each line. I'll do the uh, first line in blue. I'll do this inverse in black. So for the first line, we'd have three, the y-intercept, a slope of three, up three to the right one. There we go. So here's our line for our original function function. And then the black line, the inverse, will be at negative 1 and a slope of 1 third. So up 1 over 3. This line is our inverse. And then the red line is our reflecting line. So we can see that f and the inverse of f are reflections over this red line. So this point here would correspond to this point right here as a reflection over that. And that's true for uh, all the points all the way down the line. Uh, let's look at one more example, number six on this side of the page. So uh, step one, we will replace the g of x with a y. We'll interchange the x and the y. Thirdly, we'll solve for y. So to solve for y, we'll subtract 3 from both sides. 
And then we need to do a fifth root of both sides. And then lastly, we'll get rid of this y right here and we'll put the correct g notation. Uh, there we go. Um, now to sketch a graph of this, we have x to the fifth plus three. Uh, maybe we could start by just doing a quick table to see what this might look like. So we'll just put in a negative one, a zero, and a one and see what happens. Uh, if we put in a negative one, that would give us a two. If we put in a zero, that would give us a three. If we put in a one, that would give us a four. Uh, graphing those points, uh, we don't get a very good idea. So let's try a couple more points. We'll put a negative two and a two, see what happens. So negative two to the fifth plus three, that would be a negative 32 plus three. So that would be a negative 29. When we put 2 in, 2 to the 5th is 32, plus 3 is 35. So that's going to be entirely off the graph. So we have a function that looks like this. It's going to go kind of down this way really rapidly and quickly, and then it's going to wrap up this way really rapidly and quickly. So this is the graph of our function g, I should call it instead of f. So that's our g of x function. And really we can use this table that we have here to graph our inverse because our inverse is going to have x and the inverse of g. Um, so if I write all of those values that I had above and just swap them, there's not many calculations I need to do that way. So it looks like our graph would look like this. There's our inverse of g function. And we can see if we graph that y equals x line that these two lines would be inverses. They're reflections over that line. And they actually have a point in common, whatever point this is down there. Uh, but that would be our inverse and the graph of our original function in blue and our inverse in black. Uh, I've given you number seven as a try this, and I believe when I made the try this on Schoology, uh, I made it multiple choice, so you can identify which is the correct graph of the inverse. Uh, that'll be all for this video, but in the next video we'll do the second page, so I'll see you next time.